Hello, Merc here from Bad Wolf MC with an exciting tutorial on our amazing protection plugin, Residence, from the developer's rips. Residence allows you to protect just about everything within your area, and I'm going to walk you through the basics of Residence creation, modification, and customization. Jumping right in, we have here one of Cesar's masterpieces that perfectly captures the complexity and beauty of his architectural style. Now if you're wondering if you'll be able to create a residence big enough to cover this mansion, you'll want to type slash res limits to see the dimensions, how many protected areas you're able to create, and then of course all of our residences on Bad Wolf MC are two cents a block since we make it pretty easy to get that cash. Then at any time, if you need some help from the plugin, you can always type slash res question mark to bring up the built-in help menu. So the first thing we're going to want to do is select the area we want to protect. There are a few ways to do this, but the easiest is to grab a stick. On some servers you use a hoe, but Cesar took exception to that, so we of course prefer a long wooden rod. Now with that stick, you'll want to left click the bottom left corner on the front of the area you're protecting. Then come around to the back side with your big tool and right click the block on the opposite corner. If you did it right, you'll see these fancy particles outlining the area you just selected, but right now these particles only mean that you can hit things with the stick. Congratulations. But then you realize, oh, I forgot to include my fancy flowers here, and I want to be sure people don't mow down my bushes. So then you'll want to stand inside your residence and face in the direction that you want to expand and type slash res select expand followed by the number of blocks that you want to expand so we'll do five for now keep in mind we're still just in selection mode here so you haven't created anything yet you can also expand along the y-axis from bedrock to sky at this point using slash res select vert but keep in mind that doing this will get expensive quite fast, and we're poor, so we won't do that yet. Now if you're curious about how much your selection is going to set you back, type slash res select cost, and it will print the land cost right there in chat, so this little area we currently have selected will be $5. Now if you're happy with what you've selected, go ahead and type slash res create followed by what you want to name your residence. This name must be globally unique and can't have any spaces or special characters, so we'll go with Cesar's Awesome Build. And congratulations, you have just created your residence. Once you've created your residence, you'll want to set the teleport point. By default, this will usually be somewhere near the center of the residence, but it can put you in some weird places. Instead, stand in the exact place and facing the exact direction that your teleport point should be, and type slash res tp set. The plugin will confirm that the tp was set, and you can test it by typing slash res tp and the name of your residence, so in this case, Cesar's awesome build then it puts us exactly where we should be. We'll cover subzones in a bit, but you'd set those the same way and teleport to them using res tp resname dot subzone name. So after your residence has been created, if you realize that you forgot to protect your fancy vegetable garden back here, you're going to need to expand the existing residence to cover it. To do this, you'll want to stand inside your existing residence, again, look in the direction that you want to expand, and type slash res expand, and the number of blocks you want to expand, this time we'll do 10. This will immediately expand the residence and charge your bank account for the expansion. Now if you realize you expanded too far, keep looking at the side of the residence you want to modify, and you'll want to use slash res contract and the number of blocks and that will immediately shrink your res from the direction you're facing in the number of blocks that you specified. 
If you want to see how much an area would cost before you expand, we'll need to do things a little differently. First select the physical area of the residence by using slash res select residence, then the name of your residence, Caesar's Awesome Build, and then the name of the area, which is almost always going to be main. And then it will confirm both in chat and with particles. Next use the selection expansion command slash res select expand and the number of blocks until you've selected the desired area. Here you can also use res select vert to select everything again from bedrock to sky. Remember that this gets expensive fast but we're gonna go ahead and do it. Now you can use slash res select cost to see exactly how much this is going to be, but keep in mind that this is the cost of the entire selection, not just the expansion. If you remember the original cost of your residence, you can subtract that from this new amount to get the cost of the expansion. The plugin will not otherwise charge you twice for the area you've already purchased. To commit your changes and purchase the additional blocks, use res area replace the name of the residence, Cesar's awesome build, the name of the area, again, where the area is typically main, and hit enter. And it will confirm the changes in chat. Every residence has a set of flags that you can customize. Flags allow a player to control how things happen within the residence. You can also customize separate flags and subzones, which again we'll get to in a bit. You can set general flags for the entire residence, or specific flags for individual players, modified using either the graphical user interface or commands. To set flags for the entire residence and all of the visitors inside it by using the GUI, simply type slash red set while standing inside your residence. Now if for some reason you're not standing inside your residence and you use the command, it will throw an invalid residence error, in which case you would need to use slash res set followed by the residence name. Both will bring up this GUI. Most protection flags will already be set up for you by default. Animal killing, the ability for others to place or destroy blocks, and hostile mob spawning will already be disabled, but you can use this GUI to customize exactly how you want things to be. For example, the teleport flag is automatically disabled, so from the start, you would be the only one able to teleport inside your residence. To allow other people to teleport inside, you'll want to left-click the icon to set it to true. To disable it again, you'll want to right-click the icon to set it to false. To make it default to vanilla behavior, or in the case of a subzone to make it take on the characteristics of the larger residence, you can shift-left-click the icon to set it to removed. You can also set individual flags for specific players. To do this, you'll type slash res pset in the player's username to access the GUI for your resident settings on that player, and you'll see their name at the top. Now, by default, most people will have false on most of these flags. Caesar still needs to put a roof on this thing, so we're going to set build to true, and he'll need chest access while he's here, so we'll also set container to true. Remember that we are only making these changes for the player we specified, not anyone else. Now if you don't want to go through all of the individual flags that he'd need to access, you can also just use slash res pset, the player's username, trusted true. Trusted is a nested flag that contains all the other flags you see here at the bottom of the screen and it allows your trusted friends the things they need to work inside your residence. 
It is important to note that some of these flags are nested within others to allow fine-tuning of permissions. For example, the button flag, which you see here, is nested under redstone, which is itself nested under the use flag. The parent flag will usually override the child, so if you have use set to false, it will override any of the flags nested within it, like redstone and button. So, for example, if you want visitors to be able to push a button but not flip levers, you'll need to set use to true, button to true, but lever to false. Now we'll talk quickly about subzones. These are areas within your residence that can have their own flags and their own teleport location. You can use these if you want to set up apartments to rent out to other players, if you want to give someone access to a certain part of your home but not all of it, if you have a mob farm in part of your house that you want to allow mobs to spawn in, or if you just want to have a couple different places within your build that you can teleport to because you're lazy. These are free to set up and you'll use the same selection methods we used when creating the original residence to select a smaller area within it. I'm also going to expand my selection up a block to protect plants. Once selected, type slash res subzone and then a name for your subzone. And you're done! You can now teleport to this subzone using slash res tp the name of the overall residence dot the name of the subzone. And that puts us, well, right where we were. You can set the teleport point here the same way we did the original residence with res tp set. To test it, I'll teleport to our original residence, then use the teleport command for the subzone, and it puts us exactly where we just set it. Very useful. Finally, we'll go over a few more things you can do to customize your residence. To set the greeting and farewell messages that print on the action bar when you enter or leave, type slash res message, enter, enter greeting, or slash res message leave and your fond farewell. Testing it quickly, we see it works immediately. Now if you decide those messages were completely lame and you want to remove them entirely, you'll use slash res message remove, then either enter or leave depending on which message you want to remove. Now if you're sick of typing out that long-ass residence name you originally chose because you thought you were being clever, type slash res rename the old name of your residence followed by the new name, and you're done. Finally, if you're done with dealing with this damn plugin, or you're just moving and you want to get rid of the old residence, you'll want to use slash res remove followed by the res name. This action does require a confirmation with slash res confirm, and it will permanently delete your residence, so you want to be sure. Upon deletion, you will also receive a 50% refund from the current block price. I hope you found this derpy little tutorial useful, but for more in-depth instructions on the residence plugin, go to badwolfmc.com slash residence. Thanks for watching.